In this video, I'm going to show you how to take a blog hero header title page header area, whatever you want to call it. So, for example, here is one right here that is an option inside of the cadence theme. Uh, and we're going to just do something a little different in this video. We're going to make it look totally different. We're going to make it look like this. And what's different about this header is I'm also including the excerpt here on the right. It's a totally different layout and structure. In fact, you're going to be able to create any layout structure that you desire. You're going to learn how to do that inside of this video. So let's get started. Now, to be able to do this, you're going to need the Cadence Pro theme as well as the Pro Blocks plugin. So let's go to where it says Appearance, and then I'm going to click right here where it says Cadence. You should have these options here that you can toggle on. Now, what we need to toggle on is the hooked elements right here. You can see I have it toggled on, and because of that, I have this menu item here on the left that I can click into. So I'm going to go ahead and click into that. I'm going to click right here where it says Add New, and I am going to choose this option here that says template. Great. Next, I'm going to go ahead and give it a title. You can name this whatever you want. So I'm going to be replacing the title area of blog posts. So I'll name it something along those lines. So there's my title and I want to go into the element settings. So there's an icon here on the top right. I'm going to click into that and it's going to show me the settings. So first I'm going to choose where it says preview settings. We get this little pop up and uh, right here we can adjust the editor width. We don't need that for this, what we're doing in this video. And but if you wanted to preview it, data from a specific blog post uh, so it will pull in the title and the excerpt or whatever data that we're going to be using to design this layout, we have this really cool preview post option. So this is going to show a list of the different types of of content on your website. For me, I want to use the blog post and I'm going to click right here. It says select preview posts and it's going to list out all of my blog posts. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the preview for this blog post right here, the five reasons. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that and click on select and then click on close. So as I'm designing this out, it's going to use the data from that blog post. Next, over here where it says placement on the right, let's see those options. We're going to want to choose replace above content hero. So I'm going to choose that. And then for the display settings, I want to show this on single blog posts. So let's scroll down and here it is. It says posts and there here it says single posts. So I want to just replace the this area with my design on all of the different blog posts. So I'm going to choose this. Now you can add rules if you just want it on certain blog posts that have certain tags or categories or something along those lines. But that's what I wanted to choose here. And then for the user settings, let's expand that and we'll choose all users. And then I'll go ahead and click on publish, publish. OK, so now let's go ahead and start designing this out. I want to first start it out with a row. So I'm going to click on the plus and here's my row layout option. Or you could type row to get the option right here. So I'm going to click on it. And then I'm going to select the two column layout just like that. Next, I'm going to start putting in the text elements that I want. So on the left column, I'm going to click on the plus and I'm going to put the advanced heading in right here. And this is going to end up being our title. So what we're going to use is the dynamic content feature found inside of Cadence Blocks Pro. I have a video on it that I'll put in the video description down below, but basically we can pull in any dynamic value here by clicking on this icon in the toolbar that says dynamic content and then we choose it uh, a value and so for this I'm going to choose the post title and that looks good and I'm going to click on add dynamic content and there is my title. Now underneath it I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add the advanced heading just like this and I'll select it and I'm going to put by and this is where I'm going to put the author information and also the last updated date. So I'm going to type by and then I'm going to click on pay uh, the space bar and I'm going to choose that same icon for dynamic content. I'll click on it 
And for content, I'm going to scroll down and choose where it says the author name. There it is, the author display name. That works for me. And then I'm going to click on add dynamic content. Great. But you can add multiple pieces of dynamic content to the same advanced heading block. So I'm going to click on the space bar and I'm going to type last updated on and let's go ahead and click on the dynamic content icon and I'm going to go ahead and choose the last the post last modified date and I'll select that and I'll click on add dynamic content and there we have it so far this it needs some formatting but everything's looking really good okay on this right column I'm going to click on the plus just like this and this is where I want to add the post excerpt there's two ways of doing this we can put it inside of an advanced heading block so we can get some styling or there's there's also a dedicated post excerpt block. So if I started typing uh, post, you can see uh, right here, there's a post excerpt block. Let's just first give it a shot with that. And there is my post excerpt. All right, let's go ahead and click on update and see how this is looking on the front of our website. Here I am on my blog post and you can see I have some styling work to do, but it's already working. We have this being replacing the this uh, area of each of our blog posts, but we have a little bit more work to do. So let's get to it. So mainly what we need to do now is some styling. We need to change the sizes of these different fonts. We're going to change the color as well on them. And we need to properly configure them, put a background image and probably a background overlay gradient on it as well. So first let's fix some of the issues with the text that you want to watch out for. So I'm going to click right here into the title area. And then let's pull up the block settings by clicking on the little wheel here on the top right. Now, the title of your blog post should always be the H1 tag. So it says HTML tags. We put H1. That is what it should always be. So now that we have that set, this is good. I don't know if we like the size of that. I might want to make it a little smaller, the size of the font. So maybe the font size. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and maybe make that uh, 30. No, 30 is too small. How about uh, 36? We'll leave it at 36. So next, I'm going to click right here, which is the meta information that is underneath it. So we are now in those settings. I'm going to change that to this paragraph option here, and it's going to immediately change it. There it is. We'll leave it the size that it is. We might want to adjust the size and make it smaller later. But I do want to change the color of this specifically because we're going to make it be the yellow in our site's color palette right here. Now, I know it's hard to see. Don't worry about that right now. OK, now what I want you to do is click this list view. So it's these three icons here in the toolbar. And this is going to give us a, a list view of everything that is inside of this section. So let's start styling this up some. So first, I'm going to click where it says row layout, just like that. And I want to adjust the vertical alignment. So you can see in this toolbar, it's going to be this icon right here where it says vertically align. I'm going to click on that and I want all the content to align in the middle. So I'm going to choose a line in the middle like that. I might adjust it later in this video, though. Next, let's get our featured image here in the background. That's pretty simple. Over here on the right where we have the settings for our row, I'm going to choose where it says background settings. And for the background image, there's that same dynamic icon. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to toggle this on. And for the background image, I'm going to go into the drop down and choose the featured image. And this is the featured image that is added to the blog post. All right. This looks fine to me. And let's go ahead and also put a background overlay. So this is going to darken it up some and make it easier to read the text. So for the color, I'm going to choose this color from the color palette right there. And I'm going to leave it like that for now. You can adjust the strength of this with this slider right here. So if you really wanted it to be strong, you could do that. 
or you can leave it like at 60 or 50, whatever you want. And we can also have a gradient. I'll probably switch it off to a gradient. Now let's uh, scroll on down a bit. And there's this option here that says text color settings. Let's go ahead and, and expand this option. And it says text color. And let's go ahead and change this to white. And there we have it. So now the post title and the excerpt are white. The only reason this is not white is because we specifically selected a color for it. Let's uh, try to adjust some of the structure. So right now it's set to 50-50 as far as how wide these different columns are. I'm going to see what it looks like if I just switch it a little bit. There's 55. Um, actually, I think I like that maybe the 60-40. We can adjust this however we want. If we get rid of this list view by clicking the icon, we can kind of get a better feel for how it looks. That's actually fine for me. I think I might make this a little smaller. Let's go ahead and click in it. And I'm going to go where it says font size right here. Let's see what it looks like at 16. This is the details about the post. So sometimes you have that be a little smaller because it's not as important information. All right. So I'm going to click out of it. This looks good, but we need more height. We certainly need more height. So uh, it's real easy with the, the Roblox. So you can see where my mouse cursor is. It says 25. I can literally just drag this and adjust the size dynamically. And I can do the same down here. I can add some extra height to it. So maybe we make that 50 on the top. We maybe make that 140. Uh, let's see how this looks. I'm going to go ahead and click on update. Here is the front end of the website again. And remember, this one's a little more complicated because we have this transparent header on for the header there. Anyways, let's go ahead and click on refresh and see how it's looking. Actually, it's looking pretty good. We probably just need to give it some more space up here. We can even make the title a little larger. You can literally make this look however you want it to look. So let's go ahead and make a few additional tweaks. So for me, I want to give it a little bit more height here at the top. Uh, maybe let's try 175. You can also manually enter these values in. So let's maybe make this uh, 70. So if I go right here, I'm in the row settings and it says padding and margin. And when I expand it, here's where you can just manually tweak those. Now it's ex very important that you adjust this for each device. So we see what it's going to look like on a tablet and then we see what it's going to look like on a mobile. It's not going to look, it's going to be too much spacing for a mobile. So you'll want to definitely adjust those values to get it to look exactly how you want it to look. I think I might make the background overlay a little darker. So I'll scroll down here and it was the background overlay settings. It's at 50%. Uh, maybe we make that uh, something like 70% just to darken it up a bit. You can make this look however you want it to look. So, okay. I'm going to go ahead and click on update and now let's take a look. So here's how it was looking. I'll do a refresh and you can see it's already looking a lot better. The only thing I forgot to do was to make the title larger. That's simple. So we'll go back here. I'll click on the title. The font size is set to 36. Maybe let's try 42, something a little larger like that. And then we can go and do a refresh and it's already looking better. You could even probably get away with making that even larger. So those are the basics of creating fully custom page and post headers that you can have on your website and it unlocks unlimited design potential. Whatever you want, you can now easily accomplish with just a few mouse clicks. Now this requires the pro version of the theme and the pro version of our block package. There's an affordably priced bundle that you can purchase if you'd like to have this functionality on your website. We'll have a link down in the video description box and we'll also have links to other videos that show you what you can do with these enhanced features when you pair these two products together. Thank you for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one.